Hey guys, before today's video starts, I just wanted to add a disclaimer and warning. This video is about a medical issue for a duck and how we treated that medical issue. Some of the footage is a little bit graphic and might not be the best thing for kids. You know, it doesn't get gory like ducks heads are blowing off or anything awful like that. But you know, there's a little bit of blood and there's a little bit of surgery, so maybe not the best thing for kids. This right here is it. This is the new dimensions and footprints of the duck house. Over the course of this summer, I'm gonna be swearing off my old porous duck house, the old three-sided hay shed that I added a fourth wall to, which has been penetrated by predators. And I'm gonna be building this, a new customized duck house. It's gonna be built with the functional needs of ducks in mind, but also the predator proof nature that I need for here on our farm in the middle of nowhere up in Northern Vermont. Stay tuned guys, cause I'm gonna be breaking ground real soon on this one. So I really want to say thank you to all of you guys for the well wishes and concerns about our ducks. They are healing up really nicely since the mink attack. Most of the surviving flock, you can actually see them right here behind me. They're looking pretty good. They're back to normal. They're even laying eggs in random places. Like I just found this one right here. That said, I do have two ducks that aren't doing so well. Um, I have one duck who's got a severely injured neck um, I'm not sure if she's ever going to be a normal duck again. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with her. Um, at this point, she should have healed up pretty much, but she can still barely move her neck on her own, and so I'm a little bit worried about her. And then I've got a second duck who has actually been pretty healthy, but she's developed a bad case of bumblefoot, which is essentially a completely unrelated ailment to the mink attack. And it's somewhat common in ducks. It usually comes from an infected cut in their foot, and uh, you know, it swells up and gets all filled with disgustingness. But uh, rather than me try to describe it to you, let me actually just show you what she looks like. So this is our hospital for wounded ducks. I've been keeping them here. It's close to the house. It makes it easier to give them medical attention. So there they are, the two sad sacks. So the one with Bumblefoot is the one on the left with the lighter feathers. The one with the darker head there, hunched over is the one that has the neck problem. See, she's just not walking right. Let me catch her and I'll show you what it actually looks like. Come on, girl. Hey, hey, easy, 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 girl. So here she is. And just so you guys are wondering, I used the net. I got it actually as a tip from Matt over at 50 Ducks in a Hot Tub. Uh, he said that it's actually an easier way and less stressful way to catch the birds is to use a net like that. And so I spent like 15 bucks at Walmart to get a fishing net and it's worked pretty good. I found that my buddy over at 50 Ducks in a Hot Tub is like the best resource for any sort of duck advice you might ever have. Um, so definitely check out his channel. It was actually watching a lot of his videos back in the day that motivated me to want to get into ducks too. So here, let me show you her foot though. So you can see it right here. That area there is where the infection is. See how it sort of bubbles up. I've been trying to treat it with non-surgical means, you know, where you soak it and you spray it and try to keep it clean. Um, but I personally have not had much success with that at all. So uh, that's why I'm, I'm trying a different tact here. So what we're gonna try to do today is a little bit of bumblefoot surgery to see if we can uh, make her feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. 
Now before we try to do the surgery on the duck, I'm actually gonna try to soak her first and have her foot soak for a little bit to help soften up the tissue. La, 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 la. Okay, it's okay, girl. This is gonna hurt. Hey, hey, easy. <laughs> um, I think she's a little afraid, but. This is built so that she can pop her head out um, and get air if she needs to. Pablo, leave her alone. No, 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 come on. I know, she's a sitting duck. Let's get out of here. In order to prep for surgery, it was important that we get ourselves set up properly. So first off, what we did was we set up a table, cleaned it off, disinfected it, got it ready. Then we got all of our supplies and tools on hand and available for while we were doing the cutting. And while I say we, it really was Allison doing all of the work. I was just more like an orderly who was just helping keep the duck still. Oh, cacks. Cacked in your Campbell. Hey, hey, hey. hey. In order to keep the duck still, what we did was we took uh, an old towel and we wrapped her up in it pretty tightly, like, like we were swaddling her. And then we're gonna have a perfectly swaddled infant. That served two purposes. One, it kept her calm. Two, it kept her from being able to flap and move around and go crazy. In terms of supplies that we kept on hand, uh, we used an X-Acto knife and a clean blade to do the cutting. We had a, a pair of tweezers. We had rubber gloves for our protection and her protection. We had a whole bunch of alcohol wipes, which we used a lot of. We used it to wipe her skin down. We used it to wipe the instruments down. You know, just trying to make sure that as we're doing this cutting, we're not introducing more bacteria and more problems into the mix to create even more problems for her down the road. So the surgery started off with Allison sort of picking at the scab itself where the infection was and really trying to pull it out. The way she described it was, it was like really like a plug. It was actually all very firm. And so what she did is she kind of pulled out the first layer. There we go. Then once she got that out, pulled out, she um, went in with the X-Acto knife and started to cut around the infected part. Okay, she's bleeding. Trying to see if I can express some of the fluid. So she cut around that and then started to remove more of the infection. Okay. Oh gosh, I got it out. Ooh, there it is. It's this is it. This is it. Are you okay? I'm fine. Okay. I'm just saying, wow, that's a lot. I wonder she wasn't feeling good. Yeah. I got out the boo-boo for you, honey, okay? And when you're in there, and if you have a duck with bumblefoot and you're dealing with this, you can actually feel it. It's kind of like hard. What One of the things Allison had said to me that she was most surprised by was how hard it was. Like, it was really, like, calcified or something is how she described it. Like, it was not like a big ball of oozy, goozy, like, pussy fluid. Like, I was expecting it to be like like popping a gigantic pimple and it would just... But no, it wasn't like that at all. It was much more like, like a hard scab that we were pulling out from inside of her. Once we started to cut a little bit, she did start to bleed a little bit. That's why it was good that we had some gauze on hand. I gotta say, the duck remained remarkably calm throughout the entire process. Like, we were totally expecting her to be wigging out and going crazy, but she jerked every once in a while on a part that definitely seemed like it hurt. 
But beyond that, she was just chill and relaxed, you know, swaddled up in her towel, no problems at all. That was easy. But I will say, if you have to do this, it's definitely a two-person operation. You want one person holding the duck, keeping her steady, and the other person to be focused on doing the removal. I couldn't picture trying to do both pieces myself. Um, I think it would have gone very, very poorly if that was the case. Once we had all of the infection removed and we could see like all the little pieces and chunks of disgustingness, um, it was time to uh, spray her down, wipe her up. Then we made sure that we used some antibiotic ointment um, to try to prevent infection. Our plan is that we're going to let her wear this bandage for about three days and then we'll probably go in there, check on her, um, remove anything else that we might have missed, as well as apply a new bandage and new ointment. Again, trying to prevent infection. And at least her foot's splayed. That's the important part. We're now covering up her toe. That's here. She needs her balance. You did so good. You were so good. So now we have to release this quack in. Mm. Mm. Do I see if she walks on it? <laughs> but you know, all in all, it, it went pretty much as good as we could hope. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this goes over the next a uh, week or two and see if she heals up. I'm really pulling for her. Uh, she might have a limp or something, but we're really hoping that she makes a full recovery. I'll definitely keep you guys updated in these videos in terms of how she does.